Mende ne kete bragada balande satala kataya glada barataya ne. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence that is evidence with us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Now manifest your power in our lives. As your word goes forth, let your power go forth. As your word goes forth, let healing virtue go forth. As your word goes forth, let there be deliverances. As your word goes forth, give direction to the confused. Give hope to the hopeless. Give faith to the unbelieving. By all means tonight, let this mountain be a mountain of deliverance. Let it be a mountain of holiness. Let it be a mountain of distribution of the inheritances of your people. Amen. Let every veil and every covering over the hearts of your people be chattered. Let the light of your glorious gospel permeate our hearts. Amen. Let each one return from here tonight with clarity of purpose. Amen. Thank you, Father. And for all that you do tonight, even beyond our asking, take all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Please give the Lord a big, big clap of praise. And you may be comfortably seated. In our midweek service tonight, we are beginning a very vital and all important subject to everyone as it pertains to our lives and destiny. And I'd like for you to please pay very careful attention to what the Spirit of the Lord shall be ministering to us tonight. Before I go into the teaching tonight, please note that a new email address has been created for those of us who may need to communicate some very private and personal matters with the chaplain. And so the email address is chapattention at cu.edu.ng chapattention c-h-a-p attention at cu.edu.ng Dot ng. So for those of us who may have some very confidential matters that you may want to call the attention of the chaplain to, 
you are to please use that email address in pushing forward those matters of concern. And you can be rest assured that the confidentiality required will be given 100%. Praise the Lord. You can also do well to share with your friends who are not here all matters as it concerns any individual amongst us who needs the chaplain's attention. Please, you do well to send such through the email address. That email is dedicated solely for the chaplain's attention. Thank you, Jesus. The man in the cloud, the calabalado, so the and the naked root of those catalia genados. Thank you, Jesus. So, tonight we are looking at discovery and pursuit of purpose. Discovery and pursuit of purpose. You don't have to live your life to chance. You don't have to live by guesswork. You can live a secure future by walking in divine purpose. And so we are going to be looking at this very vital subject. We're looking at what is purpose. Why purpose? Benefits of purpose. Discovery of purpose. Pursuit of purpose, benefits of purpose, the enemies and traps of purpose. And then, of course, examining the examples of men of purpose. And so, my charge to us this evening is ensure that you don't miss any part of these, because all of this you, we cannot cover in one service. And so, every midweek service is unique on its own. And so, for those of all that may not be here, please help them to be a part of what God is doing. It will be a plus to every one of us. It is my small rule said that when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse becomes inevitable. And so let's first begin by this fundamental statement of scriptures. Number one is to note that God is a God of purpose. God does not do things anyhow. Say with me, God is a God of purpose. Say it convincingly and say it with faith. God is a God of purpose. In Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 1, the Bible tells us that to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. 
And let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. So you look at that scripture, it tells you that God had a purpose for which he created man. And verse 27, so God created man in his image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And look at the blessing. And God said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moved upon the earth. Was that not the reason why he created them? So the blessing he blessed them was putting a seal on the purpose for which he made them. The blessing that was given to them or released upon them was released upon them to fulfill the purpose for which he made them. And that is why everyone who is walking in the purpose of God walks in the fullness of the blessings of God. You want to walk in the fullness of his blessing? Walk in divine purpose. God is a God of purpose. To everything under the sun, there is a purpose. Every product in life is made for a specific reason. Number two statement I want you to note tonight. Okay, so before we go to number two, look at this scripture, Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. It's a scripture some of us may be familiar with. It says, and we know. Can we read together one to go? Whose purpose? Number two. Man is a creature of purpose. Man is a creature of purpose. Man is not a product of science. No. No matter the circumstance surrounding the birth of any man, man is not a biological accident. Your parents may not have planned your birth. Your mom may not have known when she got pregnant. They may have said all kinds of stories surrounding your birth. But here it is, the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse, sorry, let's begin with Psalm chapter 100 and verse 3. Psalm 100 and verse 3, this is what he said. He said, know ye not that the Lord is God? It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. So who made you? Hello? Who made you? Say with me, I'm a creature of purpose. I'm not a biological accident. I'm not a product of science. I'm a creature of the Almighty. Now, Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, this is what the Bible says, he said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Who formed you? Before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee for a purpose. Man is a creature of purpose. Concerning Paul the apostles in Galatians 1 verse 15 and verse 16, this is what Paul said. He said, when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb? From where? And called me by his grace. That calling there talks about purpose. To reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the hidden. And immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. First John 3 verse 8 concerning Jesus it is written. For this purpose the son of God was manifested. That it might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus himself testifying to that in John 12 and verse 27 he said. For this cause came I unto this very hour. Man is a creature of purpose. Let me also add this very quickly. Number three. That purpose is not determined purpose is discovered. 
You don't determine your purpose, you discover your purpose. Why? There is no product that exists without a manufacturer. And there is no product that can determine its usefulness to the manufacturer. The manufacturer determines the usefulness of the product. In fact, the product before creation is a finished work in the heart, the mind of the manufacturer before it is made. And so everything that a product needs, everything the product needs to become what the manufacturer wants it to become is what the manufacturer puts into the production process. And so you and I, we are wired up the way we are to fulfill the purpose for which God has created us. You are the way you are because of his purpose for your life. And that is why he said in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3, Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, he said, Call unto me, I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. No one determines purpose. We discover purpose. And how do you determine or how do you discover purpose? All of that we'll be examining as we go further in the course of this study, the remaining parts of this month. But quickly, let's look at what is purpose. First, we look at a dictionary definition of purpose, and then we look at the definition of purpose from proven authors who have lived or are living a life of purpose, who have lived purposeful lives or are living purposeful lives. And then, of course, we conclude the definition of purpose looking at the scriptures. First, the dictionary the time defines purpose as original intent. Say with me, original intent. Original intent. Number two, an expected end. Original intent the original intention of the manufacturer. Number two, it defines it as an expected end. What the manufacturer expects to see at the end. Now we take two authors with purposeful lives. Number one is the man, Miles Monroe. And look at a few definitions of purpose from him. He defines purpose as the original intent for creating a thing. The original intent for creating a thing, that is, the original intention for which you were created. Number two, the original reason for existence. Now, the original intention of a thing may not be the outcome of the thing. For example, how many of you have tried to use a knife to loosen a screw before? I'm sure we have all done that at one time or the other. Now, what is the original intention of a knife? Is it to loosen a screw? So, is that a purpose for the knife? There are a lot of persons who have deviated from their original intent. The original intention for which God made them. And have you noticed that sometimes when you try using a knife to loosen a screw, the edge gets bent. Why? That is not the purpose. Some other times, the, 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 what do you call it now? Help me if you know what, I'm, what I want to say. The head of the screw that has like a, a, a ball and socket thing that locks into the screwdriver, now it gets 
it, it gets worn out. In the course of trying to get the knife to fix perfectly in it, it wears off. It's just like you have a lock and key model, right? And so because the knife cannot fit in properly, it wears off the edges. So that when you eventually get a screwdriver, the screwdriver may not even be able to loosen the screw anymore because the edges are worn off. Praise the Lord. So it is also when a man misses his place in purpose, he lives in frustration. What is purpose? The desired result that initiates production. The desired result that initiates production. So you and I, as creatures of purpose, there is what God desires to see us become that necess necessitated our creation. The Chancellor, Dr. David Ereko, defined purpose this way. Purpose is the force behind the fulfillment of destiny. Purpose is the force behind the fulfillment of destiny. Until you discover purpose, you will never experience true success. Number two, he says, living for a well-defined goal, knowing where you belong. That is purpose. Living for a well-defined goal, knowing where you belong. One of his favorite quotes, he said, to have no aim for living is to live an aimless and mindless life. To have no aim for living is to live an aimless and mindless life. A man without purpose is a disaster going somewhere to happen. Your destiny will not crash. We take a few biblical definitions of purpose. Purpose is the intention of God for creating you and I. The reason for our existence. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Purpose is the race set before you and I to run in life. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. The race set before you and I to run in life. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 tells us, We have foreseen that we are compassed with a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us, and let us run the race that is set before us. So we are in a race set before us by the Almighty, who is your Creator and my Creator. Purpose is God's expected end for you, purpose is the reason for which you are born. And it is your responsibility and my responsibility to discover purpose. You don't discover purpose by wishing. You discover purpose by taking responsibility to find out what am I here for. Another word for purpose is destiny. When you talk about purpose, you talk about destiny. Destiny. 
what we call vision is biblically a discovery of purpose. A man does not have vision until he has discovered purpose. And what is purpose? The reason for which you exist. The why you exist. What is purpose? Your assignment on the earth. What is purpose? The race God has set before you to run. And in athletics, you find out that we have different lanes. And then you are told on your mark, get set, go. If anyone leaves his lane and runs on another man's lane, even if he gets to the tape before everybody else, can he get any prize? No. It may, have, it may have been the fastest runner, but in as much as he has left his lane, he is already disqualified from the race. That is why the Bible says, let every man abide in the calling wherein he is called. Know your place and stay in your place. Your purpose is your place. Know your place and stay in your place. Stop envying somebody else. Everyone created by God is created to be unique. You are created to be unique. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are not the photocopy of somebody else's original. You are your own original. And it is your responsibility and my responsibility to discover purpose. For everyone under the sound of my voice who is here to discover purpose, I decree that your eyes be opened. Amen. Your eyes be opened. Amen. Your eyes be opened. Amen. Your ears be opened. Amen. Your eyes be opened to see. Amen. Your ears be opened to hear. Amen. Every veil over your heart be uncovered in the name of Jesus. You won't live your life to guesswork. Amen. You won't live your life to chances. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Because one of the things that purpose does for you, it gives you speed. When you know where you are going, you don't branch here and there. Purpose gives you speed in life. When you know where you are going, you know who to make your friends. You know the kind of company to keep. I've often said it is foolishness to be in company of someone that is not going in your direction when you're on a journey. I remember a story, I think it was the chancellor who told us of a man who was traveling somewhere and then got to the airport in the waiting room, got into a conversation with someone and they had a good time chatting and gisting, laughing. They had a great time together. And suddenly, one of them took his bag and stood up and told him, my friend, it's been nice talking with you and all of that. We'll be in touch. They just announced my flight. I need to go. He took his bag to leave. And then suddenly, the other man discovered that, wow, okay, so now that my friend has gone, I'm the only one who is left here. So he went to meet uh, the attendant and said, well, um, so I'm supposed to be going to so -so and so place. You guys have not said anything yet. And I said, wow, oh, oh, your flight has been, was announced long ago and it's, it's gone already. What were you doing? He had been in the airport before the takeoff time. He had been there. The flight was announced, boarding announced. People were boarding. He was just in. Now, if himself and his gist partner, they were going to the same location, the man would have told him, oh God, oh my friend, they've announced our flight, let's go. But they were not going in the same direction. And so the one who was insensitive was the one who paid the price for it. In the name of Jesus, may you become sensitive to his guidance. Amen. Sensitive to his leading. Amen. Sensitive to your purpose. Amen. It is an error to embark on a trip with someone who is not going in your destination. That is what purpose does for you. It helps you to choose your company. 
Everybody cannot be your friend. It's not possible. Because everyone cannot be going in your direction. Quickly for the time that we have, why purpose? We run through this very quickly. Has someone learned anything tonight? Number one, your security is in your purpose. Men who are in their place don't die before their time. Your covering, your protection, your preservation, your safety is in your purpose. When you identify your place and you stay in your place, you become untouchable. Moses was a man who was a fugitive. He fled from Egypt. But when Moses discovered purpose in Exodus chapter 3, beginning from verse 1 at the burning bush, and then in verse 7 to 10, God told him, I've heard the cry of my people. I have seen the affliction. I have come down to deliver them. You are the one I am sending. The same place Moses fled from, Moses returned to Egypt, and not one person could lift his finger against Moses. Moses went in and out of the palace of Pharaoh with audacity, boldness, and confidence, and no one person could challenge him for once. Your security is in your place. Your security is in your purpose. You want to enjoy God's covering, walk in God's purpose for your life. Your security is in your place. In your place, you're untouchable. In your place, you're unmolestable. In your place, you're unharassable. You are kept secured, protected by God himself when you're in your place. Your security is in your place. When he led them, the sea saw them, it fled. The mountains skipped like ram. There was not one tale of evil that befell them, except when they went against his laws and ordinances. They were protected in their place. Number two, your strength is in your place. So it means my strength is in my place. Your strength is in your place. I want to talk about your place with me, your purpose. You know, in 2 Samuel 7, 10, yes, 2 Samuel 7, 10, it talks about, I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, and that they may dwell in a place of their own, and they shall move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore as before time. Your strength is in your place. The eagle is the king of the sky. But the strength of the eagle is in the sky, not in the ocean. Drop the eagle in the ocean and then you will know that he has no strength. The whale is the pride of the ocean. Bring the whale out of the ocean to the dry land. And then you see how weak it can be. The lion is the king of the jungle. Take the lion out of the terrestrial habitat and bring it into the ocean and see whether it will survive. Your strength is in your purpose. You want to maximize your capacity, your potential as God has endowed you with. Discover your place and stay there. Don't get carried away by what everybody is doing. 
I said it on Sunday that everybody is doing it does not make it right. Now, that it is working for everybody does not mean if you get into the bandwagon, it will work for you too. No. Your strength is in your place. The eagle is the king of the air, but he cannot survive in the water. The lion is the king of the jungle, he cannot survive in water. The whale is the pride of the ocean, he can't survive on dry ground. Your purpose is your place of safety, strength, beauty, dignity, and color. Number three, your provision and supply is in your purpose. He said to them in Luke chapter 22, verse 35, when I sent you without post or script, did you lack anything? And he said, no, we lacked nothing. Luke chapter 10, verse 7, the laborer is worthy of his hire. The laborer is worthy of his hire. The same thing, your provision and supply is in your place. In Matthew 24 and verse 45, he said, Who is a faithful servant? Whom his Lord has made ruler over his house to give them meat in what? Due season. Now, if you observed, I talked about the lion as the king of the jungle, the eagle, the king of the sky, the whale, the pride of the ocean. If you look at all of these animals, their source of sustenance, survival, is in their environment. The lion doesn't go to the sea to hunt for food. No. Neither does the whale leave the ocean to come and look for food in the dry land. Your supply is in your place. Your provision as ordained of God is in your place. You can't be walking in purpose and suffer scarcity and suffer lack and want. No. Everyone who is truly walking in divine purpose enjoys God's supernatural provision. Your supply is in your place. Number four, your greatness is in your purpose. The magnificence of the ego is in its place. The beauty of the whale is in its place. The display of the splendor of the lion is in its place. Your greatness is in your place. And number five, your fulfillment is in your purpose. Your fulfillment is in your purpose. The only way to live a fulfilled life on the earth is to walk in divine purpose. Can I say this? Money doesn't give fulfillment. I know a lot of wealthy people who are not fulfilled. If you come close to them, you'll just be amazed at the emptiness that is in their life. They have all the money you wish for. But the fulfillment you are enjoying, they don't have. The joy you are enjoying, they don't have. The peace you enjoy, they don't have. I have a friend, when we were in secondary school, he was the best student that we had. When he graduated from medical school, he graduated as one of the best medical students. But one of those days, he calls me and tells me, he said, okay, so, you know, thank God for medical science. I enjoyed it, and I, see, I think I still enjoy it, but that's not what I really want. I, really, I want to be a writer. So, um, you know, my dad wanted us to have a medical doctor in my family, so now we have a medical doctor. I think I'll fulfill this dream, so let me pursue my own. <laughs> And then in the course of our discussion, we remembered that there's this author called, uh, I think, Michael Crichton at the time. I don't know if he's still writes now, but he was also a writer, a medical doctor, a medical writer. And so he said, okay, so I think I'll just be like Michael Crichton. I'll just 
uh, delve into, I'll focus right on writing, but I think since I have a very sound knowledge of medicine, we write about medicine, I write about every other thing, and relate it to medicine, but writing is the thing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. You thrive in your purpose. You flourish in your purpose. You don't struggle in your purpose. One of the ways to know that somebody is not fulfilled in what he's doing, if the person is always complaining about what he's doing, then the person is struggling. This job is killing me, man. It's just messing up my mind. Uh -uh. You can't be enjoying what you are doing and it is messing up your mind. One time I had the privilege of teaching eight hours stretch. I was going from one class to the other for solid eight hours and somebody asked me, said, did you have time to sit down? I said, no. He said, ah. Uh -uh. So what were you doing? I said nothing. I was just, okay, did you feel back pain? No. Did you feel leg pain? No. Your throat didn't pain you? No. Your voice? No. And you had everything to say. I said, well, I, I wasn't the one who was saying it. God was the one saying everything. I just was there as a mouthpiece. Did I enjoy it? I tell you, it's, it's one of the best days of my life till now. Praise the Lord. And I can, you see, I can teach you from morning to night. It won't do me anything. I just enjoy what I'm doing. Now, the difference between me and the person who is amazed that, okay, so why would you want to do that? How would you want to put yourself through that kind of stress? So for him, it is stress, but for me, it is not stress. If you are not enjoying what you are doing, you've not discovered purpose. If you are not fulfilled in what you are doing, you've not discovered purpose. Purpose comes with fulfillment. Purpose comes with fulfillment. And there are a lot of people who are doing a lot of things today that they are not fulfilled in what they are doing because their motivation for it is money. The great man of God, Kenneth Copeland, he should be almost 85 now if I'm not mistaken, but I think while he was 80 or thereabouts, some fellows came to him to ask him, that, okay, so sir, now that you are 80, you should be planning to retire. And you know what he said to them? He said, we don't retire, we refire. We do not retire, we what? Refire. Now, what is an 80-year-old man looking for? That he's saying, we don't retire, we refire. There are a lot of people that are not up to 80. They are looking for how to run away from the earth. How many of you know that? You tell them about long life, they say, eh, 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 what will I be doing on the earth at that time? No, 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 I don't want to live that long. No. Ora Robert was 90 when he was asked, so by, at the age of 90, uh, what next? You should be winding up. He said, no, we are not winding up. There are yet more grounds to conquer. There are yet more territories to take over at the age of 90. The fish does not struggle to swim in water. The bird does not struggle to fly. Why? That is what it is wired up for. There is what you are wired up for that you can do effortlessly without any encouragement from any outside force and yet you will still be fulfilled. That is purpose. If you have not found it, get back to God. Our time is already fast spent, but two quick examples. Number one is the man Moses. In Exodus chapter 3, beginning from verse 1 to 10, Moses discovered purpose. Now in Exodus chapter 11 and verse 3, this is what the Bible says concerning Moses. He said, and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servant, and in the sight of the people. Say very great. Say louder, say very great. Now look at Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 10 to 12. Deuteronomy 34, verse 10 to 12. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. In all the signs and wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all that are in his land. And in all that mighty hand and in, a great, and in the great terror which Moses showed in the sight 
of all of Israel. There arose not a prophet like unto Moses. You look at the man called Paul the Apostle. In Acts chapter 9, Paul encountered purpose. Beginning from chapter 9, everything about Paul changed. In fact, in Acts chapter 14, verse 11, the Bible tells us, <laughs> it said, when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices in the speech of Lycaonia. The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Purpose made him a god before men. You come to Acts chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. He said, and from the body of Paul, anchor chiefs and aprons, we are taken from him, diseases departed, evil spirits left them. Verse 11 and verse 12, from Paul. In the same verse 14, the devil said, Jesus I know, Paul I also know. You want to attain greatness? Discover purpose. You want to enjoy fulfillment where you won't be complaining the way others are complaining? Enjoy purpose. The discover purpose. The reason why people are busy about a lot of things that they need not get themselves involved in is because of lack of purpose. In the quest to seeking fulfillment, they get into error. But you will not get into error. But listen to this as I close. Two cannot work together except they agree. God is the one with the blueprint of your life. God has the master plan for your life. Until you are in alignment with God, you don't have access to it. Until you are in agreement with God, you don't have access to it. Your skill may be a pointer to your purpose, but your skill is not your purpose. Passion may be a pointer to your purpose. But purpose is not all about your passion. That is why you need God. That is why you need active partnership with him. That is why you need communion with him. That is why you need fellowship with him. Rise up on your feet. Jesus, I refuse to live my life to chance. I choose to walk in purpose. I choose to walk in your purpose for my life. I refuse to live my life to chance. Lift up your hand to heaven and talk to the Lord. I refuse to live my life to chance. I refuse to live my life to guesswork. Let this month be a month of discovery for me. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus.